Hey, it's awesome to be here. It's, uh, it's very humbling to be here. Um, sometimes I am C. Um, other times I just help set up in the morning, which we need volunteers, so this is a good volunteer plug. If you get up, get up a little early, early on Sunday, come on in, help us set up the chairs. We need you guys. Um, but hey, Pastor Scott asked me to uh, just fill in for him tonight, and um, last time I spoke, he actually asked me 20 minutes before he was supposed to speak, uh, he lost his voice, and he said, you think you could just stretch out your devotion a little bit? And I'm like, oh, great. Um, so I think that was the lowest attend attendance of that, of that time period. Um, so I'm here to uh, make amends and um, just here to just really have a conversation. I'm a, I'm a middle school teacher. Um, I teach seventh and eighth grade and I'm usually, you know, very animated in class, but I'm just, I'm glad you guys are adults and um, I get to have a conversation with you guys. So we're just gonna have a simple conversation tonight. I'm gonna be very candid. I'm gonna be very honest. Um, this is coming from a place of uh, learning um, slash brokenness slash humility um, and frustration. And um, I know that, that um, although I will be kind of talking about some of the things that I do and some of the things that are going on in my life, um, I know that I'm not going to be speaking to myself tonight. I know that this word is, is timely, um, that there might be one or two or all of us that have gone through this, are going through this, or are going to go through this. I think it's part of life, um, and I, I also think it's part of um, the purpose that, that, God, that God has for us. It's part of the plan that he has for us. As frustrating as, as it could be sometimes, um, I'm in it right now, so I'm with you. If you're sitting there and you're saying, I don't, you don't know what I'm going through, I, I probably don't. But I want to give you encouragement because I, I'm, I'm in the, the confusion right now. I'm in the storm right now. So hopefully um, you could take something that the Holy Spirit's just going to plop down on my heart and, and you could take it and run with it. Um, let's just pray. Father, we just, we just thank you so much for tonight, God. I just pray that you uh, just anoint my lips, God, for whoever needs to hear it, that their ears will be open. Um, and, and that a seed will be planted, God. I, I just pray um, that everything goes according to your will, your time. And for those that are in this season of life where they just feel like it's about to be breakthrough and you're saying to them, wait one more second, wait five more minutes. God, I pray that they hold on. I pray that they put you first and that their hope and trust is in you and you alone. In Jesus' name, amen. So last summer... Um, we had the Harbor Conference, and Pastor Robert Madu came, and something that he said uh, to the crowd really struck my attention, and he said, preach from your weakness. And I, and I take that, and I run with it. You know, when I, when I asked, get asked to do chapels at school, or I'm the chapel coordinator at Smithtown Christian School, when I, when I get asked to do that, or, or sometimes when I get asked to do a devotion, I want, I want to preach from something that I've been through, something that hopefully I've learned, I've overcome, um, and... Uh, so this is, this is preaching from, from my weakness here. And uh, the, the title of this, of this sermon, I guess you would say, is Shattered Expectations. Shattered Expectations. And uh, I, think, I think many times, I, I will speak for myself, um, you know, I'm 31 years old, but I can definitely say that in my 20s, um, 20s were a time of I was graduating from a Christian university, um, still um, trying to find myself in life, what I wanted to do, who I wanted to so associate myself with, what kind of reputation I wanted to have. Um, you know, I, I, I wasn't married in 20. I, 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 you know, I, I finally just got engaged like three weeks ago, which is pretty awesome. Um, but, you know, and I think social media has a lot to do with this. I, I can get lost, not anymore, but in my 20s, I would get lost and say, man, that person's married, that person's married, I went to school with that person. Oh, that person has twins, awesome, what am I doing? I'm playing Call of Duty, that's great, okay? That's, that's real good, that's really good. Um, you know, seeing, seeing who's buying this house, who's buying that house, and like, I just bought a new car air freshener and I'm psyched, okay? So, so I didn't know if this was like my problem or if people were just more mature than I was, but I was definitely going through a time of, God, where, I, where are you? I need you, and I need answers, because I don't know what I'm doing right now. And I feel like I'm doing everything correctly, and I feel like I've hidden your word in my, in, in my heart, and, and um, I speak to people, and I give life to people, and I'm at school, and um, Lord, I feel like I'm doing all the right things. Where are you? I feel like I would be further along than this. 
How come all the people that, that I see online, how come all the people that, that maybe I went to school with at some point or another, how come they're way better off than me? Why, why is that? You know, you said you were going to take care of your children. And here I am, living in my parents' house, which I know my mom's here. It was a blessing. It was a blessing. It really was. It really was. We, we have good memories in that house. And um, um, it, it was just a blessing to be there. And I believe that the Lord um, kind of had me. I never really had a, a solid, solid group of friends uh, in my 20s. And I feel like the Lord kind of kept me isolated for, the, for that um, time in my life to, to teach me um, a couple things that I needed to learn by myself and, and away from everyone. Um, so let me just tell you about my job. My job, I work at Smithtown Christian School, and, and um, you know, it's not a public school. There's, there's no pension there. There's no 401k. Um, definitely not making what public school teachers are making. And, and uh, I will be honest with you. I look at some of my friends, and uh, one of my best friends, he teaches in, in the city. And, uh, you know, he has his master's and everything and, and the whole nine. And I'm looking at him, and I'm going, man, I should have taken that route. And meanwhile, let me describe my job to you. For the past nine years, I've been a middle school teacher to the seventh and eighth grade, where we've dugged, we've flossed, we did the Macarena. They didn't know what that was. That's when you know I'm getting old. I've been the chapel coordinator. I've been a department head of the history department. I've been a missions coordinator for nine years, leading kids to leading 15 to 17 kids to foreign countries. Um, yeah, that's us up there. We've We've seen the most beautiful faces in Haiti. We've seen the most beautiful faces in, in Oaxaca. Uh, we just recently came back from Puerto Rico. Um, so we go down to foreign countries. We, we involve ourselves in feeding programs. We, we just built, um, we just rebuilt a woman's home. She's been out of her home for 16 months to Hurricane Maria, and we just rebuilt our house in four days two weeks ago. So, um, you know, there's, there's these opportunities of a lifetime where, um, I'm, I'm looking at other people and other things and other circumstances. I'm saying, God, yeah, that's awesome, but I, I kind of want this. And, and it's selfish. You know, it's selfish. There's, there's lots of things that I want um, that are going to all burn and pass away, and yet I invest m myself into them. And, and I want to save for them, and I want them to make me happy. I'm just, I'm just laying it all out there. I'm being honest. I get distracted. I get distracted. I want the stuff, I want the security, I want the nice house, I want the picket fence. And, you know, seeing kids like that, I remember that moment. I remember taking my laptop and just putting it up and saying, everyone smile. And these are just Haitian, these are, these are misplaced Haitian children because of the earthquake. And the fact that they can see themselves, let me just tell you something about Haiti in this picture real quick. These kids were so poor that we took Polaroids down there and we started to take pictures of them and they saw themselves for the first time in their life because they didn't have a mirror at home. And even now in this moment, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about it going, how could you want all the other stuff? Like, this is it. This is what, you're, what you should be living for. You turn that kid's life around with a smile, with a, with a, with a picture. I get distracted. The team that I'm on is called Undignified. We get to dress in, in clown pants, and, and the woman that I work with, she's, she's awesome. She's like an off-Broadway choreographer, and uh, she, she does dances, and, and we bang on drums. We're like the guys you find in the subway in New York City banging on the drums and everything. Um, she, she is a blessing to my life, and, and she's really called some things out in my life. But through those, through those dramas and through those skits, um, we've seen people healed. There was actually a time in Mexico where I laid a, a, my hands on a young boy and he, he was paralyzed from the waist down. He got up out of his wheelchair and he walked. <laughs> Praise God. We've seen, we've seen marriages restored and, and we've seen lives transformed. And, um, you know, just, just being honest with you, um, I, I knew that as I'm getting older and, you know, I had a serious girlfriend, um, you know, that I'm going to ask her to marry me and things are going to move at a, at a rapid pace from that point on. And I want to make sure that there's security for my family. So um, within the past two years, I'd say the past two years, I've been I've been putting feelers out, you know, other schools, other jobs, um, just anything. I mean, I, I started looking at if it's no offense to limo services, but like I don't drive limos, but I'm like, hey. Driving a limo, it's gotta be pretty cool. Apply, you know, I'm applying for everything, okay? And 
for the past two years, nothing has come back. And I have a pretty good resume. I, I'm like the jack of all trades, master, master of none. I do money security at the US Open over the summer. I could paint, I could do landscaping. No one calls me back. Okay, great. God, where are you? I, I thought I would be further along with this. I'm living paycheck to paycheck. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have my wife beside me pretty soon in a year. Like, where you at? I know you're an 11th hour God, but <laughs> we're, we're, we're reaching the deadline here. I need you. And it's, it's quiet. And it's frustrating at times. Sometimes you feel lonely. Sometimes you feel left out in the dark. But for the last couple of years, like I said, I've, I've been putting out feelers. And uh, I get distracted with the things that I want in life. And sometimes I put them over pictures like this and, and things like this. This was actually a rainbow around the sun in Haiti. I've seen awesome things. I, I've been to awesome places. I've done awesome things. I've seen the most beautiful faces. And yet I get distracted and I ask God, God, you got to have something for me. You got to have something for me. And, and maybe, I, maybe this has become numb to me. I, I don't know yet. Like I said, I'm in it right now, so I'm, I'm, just, I'm just stating my point of, of weakness right now. I always knew, or I think, because I'm in it right now, I, I think that Smithtown Christian School is a stepping stone for me. And I always thought it. I remember the, the woman that I work with now, she was the principal, and she said, oh, yeah, we can't wait to have you on board. And I said, well, I'm not, I'm not staying long. I'm going to go into public school. And she goes, yeah, okay, nine years later, right? Nine years later. And, uh, you know, I, I felt like the Lord was preparing my heart to move on recently, this year. Like, get ready. Something's going to happen. I'm like, okay. All right. It's <laughs> not going to say it's about time, but okay. You know, I, I'm ready. I got my bags packed. I'm ready. And I felt a peace about it. I felt a peace with this year. I, I felt a peace with, with uh, just two weeks ago going to Puerto Rico on my, on my last trip. I felt a peace about it. And... Um, you know, there were some opportunities that, that were finally starting to arise. And I'm saying, okay, you know what? Let me finish the year out with excellence. I'm going to serve my kids on this trip. I'm going to serve my leaders on this trip. And I'm going to preach the pants off off the church if they ever need me to, to preach. And, um, you know, it's, it's not that he's moving me on to something better. It's not that he's moving me on to something bigger. He's just moving me on to something different. You know, because Smithtown Christian School for the past uh, nine years has been my um, my go-to place. It's been my home. There, there's family members that that I have there. Um, and and when God removes me, or when he when he lifts the grace from me there, um, I will always look back on that season as a season of growth and as a season from when I went to a boy to a, to a man. Uh, I've learned a lot there, and and they've taught me a lot, and and they've shown a lot of love there. So um, I'm not I'm not here to just say, hey, I'm out of here, you know. And and I'm sure I have students somewhere. It's so dark in here, so I'm not leaving just yet, okay? Um, but it's kind of crazy because even within the within the past, uh, I'd say two months, I've had a couple people come up to me and just say, hey, you know, I feel like the Lord is going to be moving you on with something. And I'm like, okay, sounds good. I'll tuck that in my back pocket, and I'll go over here. And, you know, a day later, someone else that doesn't know the first person says, hey, you know, I feel like, I feel like the Lord just got something for you. And I had a meeting with, with my principal last week, and we were talking about, you know, behavior stuff. And she goes, can I talk to you for a minute? I go, yeah, sure. She goes, I just feel like we're not firing you. And I'm like, oh, geez, here we go. She goes, we're not firing you, but I just feel like you're going to be moving on soon. I'm like, that's weird. Who'd you talk to? She goes, I just, I just kind of get that. I'm like, wow, interesting. All right, so there's God speaking, all right? But my problem is I want it now. He might be preparing my heart, but he might be saying, listen, I need you to prepare your heart now because it's going to be a little bit of a journey. And the Bible says, blessed is he who is not offended with me. So if I make you wait a little bit, just know that I'm still preparing you and I'm going to release you in my timing, not yours, Chris. And that's the pill that I have to swallow. So, with that being said, I prayed for a while for doors to be open, for the stars to align, and nothing happens. I'm like the I'm like Violet in Willy Wonka. I want it now. I want it now. Okay. 
and I'm, I feel like I'm so close to that breakthrough where, where I'm just waiting for that one someone to say, hey, I got a job for you, or waiting for that one person to say, hey, do you know, I got a contact in this school, and I'm waiting, 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 and yet I still don't hear God. And then sometimes your mind's playing tricks on you, saying, well, what about if you make a mistake? What about if you really do leave everything that you love, everything that kind of gives you purpose? And I say that so loosely because it's not supposed to give you purpose. God gives you purpose. Maybe I'm too comfortable here. Maybe it's the familiar that I keep going back to. I don't know. I'm in it. I'm learning, though. I, I'm, I'm hearing God more and more that now that I've been back from the mission trip. Now, the thought of leaving what I've been doing for the past nine years scares me. It, it, it puts a certain fear inside of me. The thought of never seeing things again, the thought of the thought of never seeing, you know, natural phenomenons like this again, the thought of not feeding children in, in a feeding program with with my 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 students. That's special. That's special. Seeing people healed with your students. That's special. Equipping your students to go out and lay hands on people. That's special. And, and the thought of not doing that. And again, I'm putting God in a box right now. Like God can't not do that. Right. I think, how am I going to do this if I leave that school? How am I going to do this if I leave that position? So again, two weeks ago, I, I went to Puerto Rico, and I thought it was going to be my last trip, and I was prepared to serve my kids. And what ended up happening was they asked me to uh, preach on a Tuesday night, preach on a Friday night uh, adult service, young adult service, and then preach on a, on a Sunday morning, this uh, pastor down in Puerto Rico, wonderful man. Um, just kind of gave his pulpit over to me. I think he was very tired, so he wanted the week off. Um, but nonetheless, I took it and I ran with it. But you know what? God is so good because little did I know that the messages that, that the Holy Spirit downloaded to me for that Tuesday, that Friday, and that Sunday are the very lessons that I'm learning and the very points that I want to go over tonight. And I didn't notice it until the Lord spoke to me on the plane coming back home. So... If you're taking notes tonight, here's your first one, your first point. Faith over fear. Faith over fear. On Tuesday night, I spoke about the story of Naaman, but I didn't really go into Naaman. Um, I, I, I kind of told uh, the remaining portions of the story about the two people that Naaman was, was visiting, and one of them, before Naaman left to be healed, he was a leper, and he, he needed to be healed. And all of a sudden, this servant girl of Naaman's wife came up to came up to Naaman's wife and said, "Hey, I know of a I know of a prophet that can heal him. Send him there." Like no qualms about it. No ifs ands or buts. I know of a prophet. Send him there. He'll definitely be healed. A little girl. And then what happens is later on in those verses, it says um Let's see. And when the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes and said, "I am God." Uh, am I God to kill and to make alive that this man sends word to me to cure a man of his leprosy? Only consider and see how he is seeking a quarrel with me. Meaning, is this guy crazy? Is he trying to play a joke on me? He's coming across with leprosy. This is like a skin infectious disease. I don't want him over there. What is this guy thinking? And he's tearing his clothes off in fear. The little girl had faith. The little girl. And this guy, the king of of Israel is having fear. Now, faith and fear, if you look at both of them for what they are, both of them are contagious. Which one are you going to feed? Both fear and faith are contagious, but which one of them are you going to fear? Another example is found in Matthew chapter 8. And this is when Jesus entered Capernaum. A centurion came to him, appealing to him, Lord, my servant is lying paralyzed at home, suffering terribly. And he said to him, I'll come and heal him. But the centurion replied, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only say the word. I don't want to trouble you so much. Just say it. There's, there's so much power in, in your name. There's so much power inside of you. There's so much power that, you, that your voice comes out with. Just say the word. I, I got enough faith. If you say the word... The guy's going to be healed. I mean, that is faith. That is mountain-moving faith. And, and what's so interesting is that one of my students, her name is, her name is Lorraine. She is a sweetheart, and, and 
um, we were working on this woman's house down in Puerto Rico, and she did not want to go up on the roof. And um, we said, come on, come on, get up on the roof. And she goes, you know what? Mr. White preached faith over fear last night. I'm going up. And she went up. And here I am going, yeah, faith over fear, faith over fear. God, what are you doing? Where are you? Right? Totally, totally missing the point. And, and even, you know, I thought of that little girl that was saying, I know of a prophet. And, and lo and behold, I have Lorraine teaching me faith over fear. Faith over fear. God can use anybody. Point number two, faith over failure. Failure does not disqualify you. You're not out of the race when you fail. Not only that, but you need, you need to have faith in order to please God. Hebrews 11.6, it is impossible to please God without faith. And, and I don't know about you, but I'm, you know, I, I crave excellence. I'm a guy of excellence. I, I need to get it right. So when it comes to, when it comes to spiritual things, when it comes to the kingdom of God, I, I want to go above and beyond. You know, I haven't really taken a job because one wasn't offered yet, but if one was offered, I probably still wouldn't take it because I want to hear from the Lord. I don't want to move one step without him. And I think this, I think this plays into what I'm going through right now because I don't want to fail. I don't want to make the wrong move and fail. But look what it says. It says he rewards the faith of those who gives all their passion and strength into seeking him. All of it. Are we seeking him with all of our passion? Are we seeking him with all of our strength? I'll be honest with you. I was seeking what I can get by seeking God. That's not good. That's the wrong order. I need to see God and then he'll bring everything else to me. Again, shattered expectations. I'm expecting him to do something or, or, or behave in, in some type of manner and something completely different is going to come my way. I know it. I know it. I'm in it now. I'm learning. This is where it gets awesome. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 7 in the message, God is keeping careful watch over us and the future. The day is coming when you'll have it all, life healed and whole. I know how great this makes you feel, even though you have to put up with every kind of aggravation in the meantime. Life and life more abundantly with a little bit of temporary pain and discomfort. Are you ready for it? Can you do it? Can you hold on just five minutes longer? Can you hold on just a couple days longer to get to that life and life more abundant part? To, to get to that purpose-filled, driven life part? To get to the part where I can take you and I can mold you and I can bless you to bless other people? Are you ready? Will you hold on? Pure gold put in the fire comes out proved pure. Genuine faith put through this suffering comes out proved genuine. When Jesus wraps all this up, it's your faith, not gold that God will have on display as evidence of the victory. Amen? Now, what's interesting is the, you know, the process of, of cleaning gold, and what happens is the gold has to go through this purification process, and they do it once, and then they scrape all the imp imperfections and impurities out. Then they do it again, they scrape all the imperfections and impurities out. And they'll do it over and over and over and over again. It's a process. It stinks. It hurts. It's, it's very hot. It's uncomfortable. You're being stretched. You don't want to do it, but it happens over and over and over. But you know what the end result is? They have to wait to the, till they... This is what I looked up, and, and, the, and the website said this. What, what happens is people take the bars of gold and they hold it up to their face and it's not pure until they could see their reflection in it. And if we are made in the image of God, we are seeing God. We are seeing Jesus looking right back at us. That is our identity. That is what we have to keep refining our lives to, to look like Jesus. When we look at all the people in the Bible, all the prophets, we see them giving the same 
message. Hang on, the Messiah is coming. Hang on. Hang on, I'm here to tell you the Messiah is coming. Hang on a little longer. Will you hang on a little longer? You cannot fail if Jesus is inside of you. He cannot deny himself, which is good news for us, because we'd be in a lot of trouble. But here's what's awesome. When you come to take that point where you stop trying in your own might, and when you let Jesus take over, you have just set something off in the heavenlies where your situation, your circumstance, just went from natural to supernatural. I'm going to say that again, because you guys weren't excited about that. That's, that's awesome. When you step aside and you let Jesus take over and you let him in and you let him do whatever he wants in your life, you have just opened up something in the heavenlies where every dead end, every closed door will now be open and a river of life will come forth because your situation just went from ordinary and, and just, you know, run of the mill to extraordinary and supernatural. So, you know, going back to Puerto Rico, I preached the last Sunday we were there and, and I was ready to close the book on, on this season of my life. And, that, you know, I just it was a good sermon that, that I that I preached and, and they came up all around us and they started laying hands on us. And and I'm, I'm kind of weeping because I was thankful and I'm, I'm like, I'm, Lord, I'm ready. And even on the trip, you know, I'm getting these messages like, oh, so and so has a job lined up or so and so can do this and so and so can do that. I'm like, this is it. Like. Play the hallelujah chorus. The euphoric sounds are coming in, like the triumphant uh, exit, as a matter of fact. And, you know, off, off and running with my new job. And again, silence. And I'm like, God, I'm like 90. It's like the loading bar on the computer. It's, and then stops at 95. And you're like, oh, my gosh. I'm like at 99.9. And God's like, er, hold on a minute. You got to wait some more. And I'm like, no, no, no. I got to hear you. I need you right now. Don't do this to me. It's the 0.1% that matters. I need it. And if you don't want to do it, I'll make up the 1%. Okay? But that's when, that's when we fail. All right? That's when we fail. So, again, I'm trying to find the light at the end of the tunnel and trying to figure out everything that I planned. And it's not working out still. So here's what happened. If you want to go to the next slide, Brooke. Thank you very much, Brooke, for the media in the back. Uh, this slide this slide is, you talk a big game. Are you ready to live it? And, and this is where things start to take off. There's an element of fear that sets in when you don't know what the future holds, but there is a peace in knowing who holds your future. And, and, and that's what I'm in right now. I might not have all the answers. I don't know whether I'm coming or going. I don't know what job I will have tomorrow. I don't even know what I'm going to do in a half an hour. But I know who has my future, and I'm so comfortable, and I'm so excited knowing that I am strapped in to the kingdom roller coaster of God. And you know what? Wherever he takes me, I know that he's with me. Wherever he takes me, I know that that's holy ground because I house the Holy Spirit inside of me. So wherever he has me going, it must be with purpose. It's got to be with purpose. So we, we've been eating rice and beans for the past week, and, and my body's weak. It's almost like a fasting week and really tired. The, the flight back home is at 2.30 in the morning, so I'd say out of the, the last 36 hours, my body's only had six hours of sleep, watching over the kids, driving them to the airport, and all I wanted to do was to fall asleep. So we got in the plane, and I, and I put my hat over my eyes, and the Lord said, pick up your, pick up your hat. And I go, no. I'm almost there. Let me sleep, please, please. He goes, do you remember Tuesday night? And I said, yeah, I talked about Naaman and the girl, faith over fear. Yeah, of course. He goes, do you remember Friday night? And I said, yeah. I talk about keep going, pressing in, don't give up. He goes, do you remember Sunday? I said, yeah, I preached about the Holy Spirit and that, you know, no matter what the Holy Spirit's with you, you can't fail. He goes, okay, you talked a big game. Are you ready to live this? 
because the next couple months I might be asking you to wait for something and I know you don't want to I know that's the last thing you want to hear right now but are you, are you ready? You talked a big game. But are you are you ready to listen and heed your words that you spoke to other people? And I'm like I got to go to sleep. <laughs> but what he did in that moment is he spoke right to my heart and he said I don't want you to ask me about the jobs anymore. I know it. You, you've been asking me for, for three years now. You're a broken record. He said, I want you to ask me two questions from now on when you get up in the morning. Your first question is going to be, God, what do you want me to do today? And number two, God, who do you want me to speak to today? He said, that's all, that's all I need you to ask me, and the rest will unfold. Because I'm good. I can't deny myself. And, I, and I'm a good, good, faithful father. And you need to have trust in me. You might not understand my ways, but you need to trust me. So those two questions I, I've been asking, and, and uh, you know, going, going to the last point just to wrap up as, as the band can come on, um, you know, we can turn to Habakkuk 2.3. It says, but these things I plan won't happen right away. Slowly, steadily, surely, the time approaches when the vision will be fulfilled. If it seems slow, do not despair, for the things will surely come to pass. Just be patient. They will not be, uh, I'm sorry, they will not be overdue a single day. And again, John the Baptist, you know, I, I, I love this story where John the Baptist, he's, he can't talk. You know, the angel of the Lord came to him and said, you're going to have a baby. He's going to name him John. And, and, and he, he, um, his, John the Baptist's father, Zechariah, he could not talk. He, he was in disbelief. So the angel of the Lord kind of closed his mouth up. And it was at this point, verses 60, 61 through 64, they said to her, there was no one among your relatives who has that name. They were trying to pressure Elizabeth into naming John the Baptist something else. Then they made signs to his father to find out what he would like to name the child. He asked for a writing tablet, and to everyone's astonishment, he wrote his name is John. I believe that he wrote his name is John with certainty. He wrote his name is John knowing, remembering that point when the angel of the Lord visited him. Like, hey, you're going to have a kid. His name's going to be John. Oh, I remember that point. His name is John. I'm serious now. I remember and look what happens next. Immediately his mouth was open and his tongue was set free. With faith comes freedom. I am, I, I, like I said, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know where the Lord's going to have me. But what I do know, my alarm's off. I'm going to get off soon. What I do know <laughs> is that I'm getting off soon. <laughs> What, what I do know is that, is that God has me. I know he has me. And I know when he's steering the car, I'm the safest. I just want to close up with a couple points. All my expe expectations of what and how he was going to do it was secondary. I just need to trust and know that he is good and he will come through on his word. You see, if it's not a promise of if he'll come through. It's a promise of when he'll come through. And again, you know, we operate in the iPhone generation, I this, I that. It pops up, instant gratification. We live in this type of world where we kind of get brainwashed and molded into it. God is outside of time. He knows where I'm going to be in a couple days. He knows where I'm going to be. He knows what my life is going to be like in a couple years. And there's a verse, I, I, I don't have the reference, but delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Notice, notice the, the uh, order that scripture comes in. Delight yourself in the Lord first. Then he will give you the desires of your heart. Nothing's really working the way, nothing's really working out the way that I want it to. All in my 20s, I had all these expectations of what my life was going to be like, what, what type of job I'd have, what type of family I'd have. You know, I'm 31, and, and some, some of you might say, you know, I get this at school, right? You're still a kid, you know? 
I, I always wanted to be like a young father, you know, like 24, 25. And some of you are like, oh, gosh, you know, why don't you try that out? See how easy that is. OK. But you know what? I look I look back on that and and I just know that God has me in, in my position for a reason. I can't look back and say, oh, shoulda, coulda, woulda, you know, wanted to be. No, no, no. Because if I was a young father, I couldn't be with those Haitian kids. If I was a young father, I couldn't help, help out with the feeding program. If I was a young father, I couldn't see that young boy get out of the wheelchair. So the Lord has things in place and, and being set in motion in, in his time. God will always be something other than what you expect him to be. And with that, there's a beautiful mystery in knowing that his ways are higher than our ways. But the true question is, will you still follow him? Will you still play, uh, will you still follow the leader? Will you still do that? Knowing that his ways are kind of beyond our ways, knowing that his ways are better than our ways, knowing that we might not get the answers that we want in the time period that we want, but will you still follow a good God? Because right now in, in, the, in, in this thing that I'm in, I'm not going to call it a problem. It's not a problem. It's a learning experience. And this learning experience that God is giving me right now, I know, I know that no matter what, he's got me. And he won't let me fail. I'm his son. I'm his child. He loves me way more than an earthly father would love his son. Way more. Why wouldn't, we, why wouldn't he want to bless me? Why wouldn't he want to see his child succeed? He's created us with, with potential. He wants to see us live out our full potential. And to close, I have this question. Should we get mad that God has revealed so little concerning his ways or should we rejoice knowing that he has revealed so much? See, if you were to wake me up two or three weeks ago, I would have said, God, what are you doing? I'm so frustrated. Where are you? I thought my life would be way, way beyond this now. And then on the plane, right before I was going to go to sleep, he said, look, look at where I have you. Look at what I've done in your 20s. Who could say that they've been to numerous countries with students that, that love you and you love them, that you've spoken over, over them and into, into their lives. You've seen healings. You've seen marriages restored. You've preached from numerous pulpits in those countries, and, and, and those people have had a touch from heaven. I've revealed so much to you. Why are you losing faith in me now? Man, God is good, and I, I know someone or some people might be in this place of, of uncertainty right now. You might be in this place of, of not knowing what God's doing. But, I, but to close, would you keep going if you knew that he was right around the corner? If he was right outside the door, would you keep going? Would you go another five feet if he was at that sixth foot? I, I think that's what he's asking me. Chris, will you keep going? You're like 95% there. Will you just keep going another five? I, I'm going to be there. Will you be there? And I know I love the Lord so much that I want to get there. I will run to him. You get scared of failure sometimes. You get scared of fear. But again, it's that still small voice saying, just keep walking. I'm right in front of you. Just keep walking. I'm right around the corner. Would you keep going if you knew that I was right around the corner? And praise God, he is. Because his word is true and he says he will never leave us or forsake us. So we're going we're gonna to get into worship. I know I let it run a little longer. But be encouraged. You're not in a rut. He's got you. You don't, you don't pitch a tent in the valley. You don't set up shop in the valley. He brings you through the valley. And the, and the Lord mentions 
mountains because he actually takes and moves mountains when you have the faith. Get that picture. He makes the impossible possible. The word Habakkuk says, don't delay. It's not going to delay. It's all in his perfect timing. Rest assured that God has your situation, your circumstances, your problems, your, your tears of joy, your tears of pain, your inquiries about what, what you're going to do for the rest of your life. He has them all figured out and he will present them in a manner that he has for you. He just wants to know, are you going to be obedient in the process? Are you going to seek me in the process? Because when you seek me, you're going to find me. And then you'll, you'll start to begin to, to, you know, understand the way I work in mysterious ways. It took me 31 years to figure that out, but better now than never. Praise God. But hey, we're going to, we're going to close and. I just want to pray for you guys if if you're in you're in a similar situation to me. Because again, we all go through this and we've all been there, and maybe some of you had made the wrong decisions, maybe some of you are fearful to make a decision. But just know that God is there every step of the way. He's with you, and He's got your future in in His hands. God, we dedicate the next 20 minutes to you. God, in worship, I just prayed for those that might be struggling with the same thing that I was struggling with, God. I just pray that you meet them where they're at, that you give them little hints and and, and you drop down uh, little notes or you, or you send people along and you encourage those people to keep going because you're right around the corner. You're, you're five feet away from us, God. You're asking us to go on a little bit longer, not to give up, not to give in, not to look to the right or to the left, but to keep going like a good soldier at its post. Jesus, I pray for boldness and I pray for strength in this congregation, God. I pray that they they would be spoken to by you in the middle of the night, that they would have dreams and visions, that the Holy Spirit would be stirring in their hearts. And lastly, Father, I pray that those people that are that might feel that they don't hear you, I pray that they get the revelation that they've been planted in the place that they're at right now. They've been planted to take root and to bloom. And God, when the season comes to a close, you will uproot them and you will plant them somewhere else. For our lives are in your hands. What better hands to be in than yours? We love you, Lord. We thank you for tonight. We thank you for this opportunity to to just praise and worship you and get to know you more. We thank you so much for all the blessings. Hey, if you're thankful, let's stand to our feet and let's worship.